Yeah, well, I, I spoke. We've, we've got a customer up in uh, Blackhall. Yeah, it, it's a it's yeah, it's north of Melbourne. Well, you can you can go the long way. You can take the shortcut. It's eighteen and a half hours if you don't stop. Yeah, yeah. No, they've they've said we could we could test like remote outputs. Yeah, well, that's that's why they call them a thunderbox. When you blow them up, there's a big bang. Well, it's it's probably more like a local output. Yeah, it's it's remote, so we could say we're operating remote outputs. You don't think so? Well, maybe we could record one of the Zoom meetings or one of these sort of customer presentations. I've made a little application note talking about uh, you know plant applications, all that sort of stuff. People can just we can sort of whiz through that, and they can they can see what's going on for themselves some distributed and remote I.O. A little reference to our online configurator. You can jump online and figure out how big your RTU needs to be or do you need to split it up. And I've written it all down. I've got some examples. I've got some photos in here. Um, yeah, yep. Uh, yep, how to uh, set up the I.O. boxes. I'll just show a simple example first. Sometimes you're just trying to move I.O. between... Uh, some local I.O. boxes and but this is my sort of primary demo so the idea being you have uh, some segmented I.O. at the bottom there that that main plant just put a few modules there I've got a 35 meter bus stretched out all those modules then across the top I've got three different RTUs they're just very simple CPU setups no license options they're just behaving like remote I.O. yep and if you needed to uh, change your mind later and put some logic, you can just uh, make them able to stand alone or do some local plant control as well. Yep, future proof. Yep, all that stuff. Made a little test application as well. I just sort of dragged the stuff in from the remote, yep, all the remote I.O., put it in a function block. A little graphic within the logic, people like that. Oh, hey, I've just set it all up. I've got my big uh, demo rack. I've got some distributed I.O. Yeah, yeah, oh, and I've got the builders are working next door. I can saws and hammering. And I can probably edit all that out as well. Um, yeah, no, I think it's, well, I was going to do that little, have my little demo box. I was even going to sing a song. I like DMP3. We're all passionate about DMP3. It's the... No, jeepers. Okay. Well, I'll just do this sort of technical stuff. Yes. I know. Yeah, yeah 100,000 people watched your video. Big deal. Maybe this is a good place to start. The primary uh, overview, you might say, of our, our test uh, example application that we have here. So in plant applications, whether it's substation automation, um, solar farms, water and wastewater treatment plant type applications, there is usually a need for both distributed and remote I.O. So the objective here is to show that uh, we can have this uh, single logic application running in one of the RTUs. It has some distributed I.O on the local IO bus. So it's got this stretched out to 15 meters and two more 10 meter segments. So we have a 35 meter local IO bus here. The simulator at the end. Um, Cat6 cables passing data and power along those cables. We can monitor the um, power supply voltage in every module. So we are able to determine that we've uh, got sufficient uh, power resources and watch our, uh, our data message count etc. I'm sure we're uh, appropriately shielded and avoiding interference. And up here we have our remote I.O. devices on Ethernet connections. And make the point here, no logic applications. So all of the logic is, is running in the central RTU. And it has 
the master list of variables. That allows the logic, logic application to read and write to this uh, list of variables. And you may say magically in the background, the binding protocol is how we have mapped these remote inputs and outputs to this master list. Yep, setting up the last bit of it now, packing a few things away. We're going to talk about ping pong. Yep, no, it's ping pong. No, there's a special binding protocol. No, we can't use our own name for things. Well, we're all set up to uh, play some more. We now need to use the global binding editor to create the sort of interconnection between these sites and the nice thing about this I'll just minimize those a little bit is as I point out the different IO box locations I see the variables that are associated to those different sites I'm connected with IO box 1 I can point out its input variables and if I drop them here they are now going to be produced. So IOBox1 knows that it needs to um, send that data somewhere. If I copy those variables, if I go to the master, there's no sort of destination location for that information at the moment. If I just uh, click anywhere and paste in those variables, and if I was to now drag those onto the page, we've now cre created the association so IOBox1 knows that when this variable changes, it sends it to the master to that same variable name that we just pasted in there. So that's enough to make the inputs work. If we look at outputs, they work in the sort of opposite direction. I go back to IOBox1, I highlight some outputs. I'm going to copy them. The master needs to have an image of those variables. So again, click anywhere paste in those variable names. This time I'm going to ask the master to publish those output variables and they also need to have a destination. So we're going to take them from the master and we're going to write them to IOBox1. Okay, so we've now uh, done all that sort of replication. We have uh, IOBox1 with its input variables being published, IOBox2, IOBox3, and we now have the outputs from the uh, master site going to those three remote sites. Um, chucked in a little bit more information such as connection status, so we get the link information. Um, and also each variable can also have things like its status and a date and timestamp for each variable as it changes. If we were to go online now to this uh, little setup that we have, we're actually uh, able to see all of the variables, all their states in here. Maybe that is a bit confusing. Maybe it should probably be uh, the Brodison binding protocol or something like that. Although he's probably right, all these other vendors have their own protocols. There's no way Alan Bradley are going to use Modicon or Modbus. So they made their own, and Siemens, Profi Bus, Profinet, they had to have their own. Maybe we should, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe Broad, maybe Broad Bus. We need a Russian customer, Broad, broad Bus. So the last part of the process is um, just prove we can associate some logic to all of this remote AI that we have. I've been uh, building a little logic application. Just got a few final things to finish. So I've got a little pump controller function block. I've dragged in some um, remote I.O. So we've got the flow rate signal coming off I.O. Box 2. We've got the tank level off the uh, analog of I.O. Box 1. We have a pump running presently tied to the pump call. So I don't have to remember to turn the pump on when we ask it to run. Um, we have the tank overflow coming from... Uh, the master's IO module. So let's drag in uh, the pump fault and the uh, tank overflow. So maybe we'll take the pump fault here off uh, IO box one, we'll drop that variable in, and we'll zip down to uh, IO box three and take its first digital value, 
drop that on there that can be our station auto let's uh, get online with this RTU so we'll drop below 3.5 we get our tank to run if I lean over here and I uh, move to station 2 I can wind up some flow rate that will make our tank feel faster up we go so expectation is we get to that top point where we're exceeding uh, 9.5 we're asking our pump to stop running come back down again we'll just prove again that it works so we've proven that we can read and write uh, remote IO without logic in those um, remote sites. We've got one application that's running in our master. We've proven that uh, our little pump controller is working. It's a whole other uh, topic to understand how things like these function blocks work. It's nice that we can even look at the logic behind them. We can even see that somebody's been in here uh, having a bit of fun with this uh, special output here, incrementing. So when my friend uh, Mr. Munchenberger from Denmark calls to say how's my video going, we'll send him off to YouTube. See what he thinks. Most liked video is number seven there. Look at that. Getting up there. Gangnam style, watch out. Yes, thank you. Yes, it's a great honor. Uh, one more question. Uh, yes, it's my third rubber chicken. Um, yep, best. Uh, I think uh, best.